Now, it really is impossible today to understand how cataclysmic and how, trans, uh, 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 how traumatic the suppression of the monasteries was. Obviously, this was the complete erosion of a belief system, the erosion of a way of life, a world picture, but it was also physically devastating for the city. 23 major royal houses were suppressed and sold. Most were simply demolished for their building materials and the value of land uh, on which they stood. The whole topography of the city of Lan London was transformed in a period of less than five years. Now, this map that I'm showing you here shows you the locations of the principal religious houses in 1530. And you can see what an extraordinary amount of uh, the city, but also the immediate environs of the city, was made up of monastic land. But this map tells a very partial story because the true picture has to take into account, as well as the monastic precincts, the religious houses, the huge amount of secular property that was owned by the monasteries. Over 100 monasteries owned buildings and land in the city. And for example, um, St. Mary Spittal and St. Mary Clerkenwell, both up here, um, owned property in 60 parishes uh, in the city of London. In fact, I think on the eve of the Reformation, around 60% of the city of London, of the area inside the walls, was owned by religious institutions. 